and uh, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. The white supremacists, when they got the idea that they were going to establish something called white supremacy, they said, we have to dominate these people in all areas of activity, including their religion, particularly their religion, because religion is what? A strong belief backed up by action. That's all any religion is. And the white supremacists said, we're going to make white supremacy the strongest religion that has ever existed. They have succeeded in that. They are not in the process of doing that. Christianity, Hinduism, Islam, Confucianism, Judaism, all of these other religions don't come anywhere close to being as strong as the religion of white supremacy. A strong belief backed up by action. So people are in complete disarray. Confusion, which is what the white supremacists do. They confuse people. Well, we got them confused. We're working on getting them all confused sexually. But we have long ago got them confused when it came to the seventh area of activity, religion. All of these dark-skinned people around here killing each other, hitting each other over the head with the Bible, having endless barbershop arguments about what Ezekiel meant, or what Solomon did or didn't do, or what Ruth said or didn't say. We got them confused. That's what we do. We take any holy book, and we read it, and we thoroughly add to it and subtract from it. And then we distribute pamphlets, I mean, or samples of it. I mean, that adds to the confusion. I mean, with our names on it. And we establish different type of churches and whatnot. Different church on every corner with a different name. It's supposed to be the same religion, but we've got a different church with a different name. Adding to the confusion. You know, go over here to the Protestant church. Oh, no. They, they don't know what they're talking about. Then go over here to the Catholic church. And, oh, no. They don't know what they're talking about. Well, what about Jehovah's Witnesses? Okay. Well, we'll sample some of that. And they don't know what they're talking about. And then the white supremacists sit back. Well, when it comes to all you dark-skinned people, you got one religion. And that's the religion that I say that you have. But I might say, depending on how I feel, that you will have all of them at once or none of the above. But you will bow down to one religion. And that's the religion of white supremacy. I don't care what you think in your heads. And you black people can argue all you want to in the barbershops over there on the colored side of town or in your millions of churches. You can scream and yell and stomp and holler. But when the white supremacists walk into your church and say, all of you, get on your knees to me because I'm the one who feeds you, clothes you, shelters you, and even allows you to have a church on this corner rather than a parking lot, parking lot, parking lot. لأن الاستعداد للمستقبل يجعلنا جزء من صناعته ويعطي فرق عملنا وضوحا للتعامل مع فرصه وتحدياته. This is the summit of that nation, a nation that went to Mars, a nation that in the Arab world has been in the forefront of modernization. It's also a nation we can count on. Peace and stability are critical for continued economic progress and to secure a brighter future for generations to come. We may have disagreements, but resolving them in a battlefield is not the right way to do it. We have not lost our focus even today with all what is going on. It's tough, it's rough, but we can never lose our sight for our future. في رحلتنا المستمرة لفهم ما يحمله المستقبل لنا ندرك كل يوم بأن ما نسميه المستقبل يحمل متغيرات كثيرة. The fund acted swiftly when the pandemic hit, and I 
promise you, we are there for our members who need us now. The old traditional financial system that we've had is kind of broken. Well, we already know the name of the new system of accounting. It's called blockchain. And the new system of money is digital money. And let's be totally engaged. Waiting is bad for the planet. We should embrace technology but not become technology. Because technology is growing like this, right? Exponential. But we're growing like this. Our countries, our nations, our region here is a young region. Our leadership, they support the youth. These days are the days and years of opportunities. Let's grasp this. I'd like to know why is it important to you to tear down the system of white supremacy? It's important to me because it's important to Yah. And he's placed a burden on me for Israel and for true Israel and for their well being for their safety, um, to, to do what I can to lift them up and back into their rightful place. And part of that is breaking down what Yah has shown me is this stronghold in the spirit um, of, of white supremacy. Uh, it's been there for many centuries and it's still there and it still operates. And as long as it's there, Yah showed me that it's, it's still generating assignments on the earth, it's still empowering people on the earth. And he showed me that before we, we even take action ourselves on the earth to, to come against this, we have to go after it in spirit first. And then we can clear away will disable it so that we can move forward, we can get somewhere and not keep running into this. Um, I had a dream a couple of weeks ago that really sort of clar clarified this for me, um, sharpened this idea and gave me some structure for it. I was shown in a dream a structure made of heavy gray stones the stones were built into the shape of a triangle. Each stone was rectangular and upended, and each one lay upon others below it. One stone, then two underneath, then three underneath that. There was one capstone on top bearing the Roman numeral, numeral one. It sat upon two more stones bearing the numbers two and three which in turn sat upon three more stones, each bearing consec consecutive Roman numbers and so on. The base of the triangle was very large and faded from my view so that I could not see the bottom of it. This dream was given to me during a season when I, I was praying daily for a strategy from Yah to uplift and release Israel from her bondage here in Babylon. When I awoke, I felt that in the dream I was seeing in the spirit the actual altar or strongholds of white supremacy. It's a massive structure that has been built for centuries. Each stone represents a set of lies and systems upon which the structure has been built. As I began studying history after this, and I, I delved into a lot of history about slavery and oppression and, and all of it. And as I began studying that history, I discovered that um, teachings justifying the enslavement uh, of others began as far back as ancient Greece and Rome. The stones of my dream led me back to these origins, I believe. These teachings were adopted by and expanded upon by the nations that eventually participated in the transatlantic slave trade. This altar in the spirit still stands and continues to manifest its evil to this day. And the goal of this prayer is to target one by one each stone in this structure 
and the set of lies and systems upon which it's based. Each stone that is destroyed will cut off the power supply to those operating under its influence in the world. Our Messiah came to destroy the works of the enemy, and by his shed blood we are given the same authority. So let us pick up this authority and do battle. Father Yah, Father, I, I, first I just want to thank you for the honor that you bestow upon us, your servants, to be a part of this charge, to be a part of this battle next to you, partnering with you, partnering with heaven, yes. to bring your system here and to your earth, because this is your earth yes. and nobody else's, and you are going to reclaim it. And I am just very honored that we are part of um, of that movement with you. Hallelujah. Yahusha, the word tells us that your sacrifice, that by your sacrifice, you spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them openly and that you triumphed over them. And then you gave that authority to us. Yeah, the weapons, the authority, the power that was released. And we go forth to dismantle and destroy this altar that you showed me in, in the dream. This altar of white supremacy. And I'm going to I'm going to speak to each lie and each system which propagated those lies. And we are just going to um, tear it down. We're just going to begin to tear it down. So I want to I want to give glory to you, Yahuwah. I want to I want to read some of your word to remind us of who you are, because you're our commander and you're our general. And I just I want to read about your glory. I want to remind the enemy about who you are. Yahuwah is clothed with power and majesty. With, Yah with Yahuwah is terrible majesty. Job 37, 22. Mm. He is clothed with strength. Psalm 93, 1. Men will try to hide in the clefts of the rocks for fear of him and for the glory of his majesty. Isaiah 2, 21. There is majesty in his very name. Isaiah 2, 19. The voice of Yah is powerful, Psalm 29, 4. Hallelujah. His words created everything, for by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, mm -hmm. Colossians 1, 16. Yes. Thine, O Yahuwah, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is thine thine is the kingdom O yah and thou art exalted as head above all yes first chronicles 29 11. all right now that we have that established <laughs> and i'm going to start naming the stones that i saw in my dream the first one, the first stones I'm gonna I'm gonna call out are, are systems, represent systems, demonic systems. The first system I'm calling out is the system of philosophy. Mm. The philosophies, particularly going back to the ancient world, back to Rome, and back to Greece, and back to, in particular, Aristotle, mm. who was a Greek philo philosopher back in the in 300s BC, and. What he wrote was, one of the things, the many things he wrote was, humanity is divided into two, the masters and the slaves, or if one prefers it, the Greeks and the barbarians, those who have the right to command and those who were born to obey. I just speak to that philosophy and, and I just, I speak to that one in particular, but I speak to all the other philosophies that came out of Greece or Rome or any of the ancient world. Yes. And 
which this one just represents. It's just a uh, a prototype. I just name it because it's a prototype. But we're attacking all the philosophies yes. that poison the earth into believing that human beings have uh, that there are groups of human beings that are superior and groups of human beings that are inferior. Yes. And that the enslavement of any human being mm -hmm. is is natural and normal. So we we call out that that stone, we call out that system by the blood of Yahusha and by the authority we have in him, we say to that stone, you be destroyed, you are you are just we declare you destroyed, we declare yes. you annihilated it, um, we detonate you mm. until you are nothing but dust. Yes. The second system, the second stone that I'm, I'm going to target is uh, the system of art, the arts, which is literature and theater, music, the, all of the arts. I'm going to go back to the 1300s. I'm going back to Morocco. A man named Caldon, an Arab Tunisian disciple of Aristotle, because the philosophies of Aristotle moved, went forward in into Morocco, into Spain, into Portugal, into Western Europe, into England, and eventually made, made its way all the way over to America. Mm -hmm. So a man named Khaldun, Arab Tunisian, he was a disciple of Aristotle. He wrote uh, the, the, the Mukadima, which mm -hmm. reported derogatory descriptions of Africans throughout. Uh, the 14 and 1500s, Spain and Portugal, Prince Henry was a Portuguese prince. He was one of the first Europeans to sail to Africa for slaves. Gomez Zorara, a Portuguese author who wrote about the racist slave trading practices of Prince Henry in a book called The Chronicle of the Discovery and Conquest of New Guinea. Uh, Bartolomeo de la Casas, Spanish priest who came to America, he held land and indigenous people captive. But eventually he felt convicted and began advocating for the importation of Africans to replace and ease the suffering of the Native American captives. Mm. Curiously. Mm -mm. Uh, 14 and six, 1400s to the 1600s, England. Richard Hacklup was an English writer who wrote uh, Principal Navigations, Voyages, and Discoveries of the English Nations in which he urged explorers to go out and conquer and colonize the world. Mm. And apparently many did that in response to his writings. Uh, William Perkins, a Cambridge professor who wrote Ordering a Family, which attempted to characterize the master-slave relationship as a loving family relationship. Mm. Ben Johnson, an English playwright who wrote this a horrific thing called The Mask of Blackness, which was a play commissioned by King James I. Mm -hmm. uh, lastly, uh, I'm going to name uh, Francois Bernier. Uh, he, he was a French physician who wrote something called Di uh, New Division of the Earth by the different species or races of man that inhabit it. Mm -hmm. and he, was, he was not the first one to coin the word or the idea of race, but he, he was the first popular classifier of all humans into races. Um, based on phenotypes or, or uh, observable traits of an organism. Uh, but he, it was basically an invention. It wasn't, it, there's nothing scientific about it. He, he even said he based it on his personal, personal experience as a world traveler. Um, and he just, he just decided to get, categorize all humans into groups, um, which was not even scientifically true. Um, and it, it eased the, the dissonance uh, in, in the white race for what they were doing. Mm -hmm. That's as I can tell. So, so that's a system that needs to, to come down. That, yes. that, that system of arts and literature and theater that the racist um, brands of the arts that were so prevalent um, in prior centuries. And so, Yes. So I just declare, I declare right now that the spiritual 
stronghold, the spiritual altar from, mm -hmm. that, that is still generating this, that, that started the generation of this, these lies and, and this evil. Mm -hmm. uh, just declare that it, it is, it's done, it's destroyed. Yes. It's blown up, it's detonated and into dust and it's the dust blows away in the air. Yes. And and it, it no longer propagates this poison. No yes. longer. No more. Yes. It's time for this to end. Yes. Yes. In Yahusha's name, I take authority and I declare yes. it done. Yes. Starting now. Hallelujah. The third system, the third stone in the altar that I see is education. Mm -hmm. Again, going back, we go. We have to go back to the roots. Yah, show me. Go back to the roots. Yes. 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 It's still happening, but let's go back to the roots. We want this whole thing down. Yes. So, the universities in England adopted and taught, guess who, the philosophies and views of Aristotle, in support of slavery, and then they carried the philosophy to America. Mm. Uh, a man named Henry Dunster was a Puritan clergyman and head of America's first college, the forerunner of Harvard. Um, and he fashioned Harvard's curriculum off of Cambridge back in England, which of course was propagating the lies, was just passing down the lies. In the 1700s, the, the, the early colonial colleges that, that were established in America and, and, and used the same curriculum from England were Yale, Princeton, Brown, Dartmouth, William and Mary, Columbia, and Rutgers. And all of these were in some fashion complicit in and dependent on the Atlantic slave trade and the practice of slavery itself. And that's all documented. And It, and, and it, you know, it, it still operates today in our universities. Um, I've seen it with my own eyes. I've gone through the universities and I've watched it. So it, it's it's not as overt. It's more covert, but it's definitely still operating. So, Father Yah, we're 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 we're, we're targeting. This system of education going as far back as, as England. Yes. Right now, and in the name of Yahushua and by the authority he's given me, I just declare that strong that part of the stronghold destroyed, disabled. Yes. Taken down completely. Yes. Completely cut off. All yes. power that comes out of that. That, that part of that, that altar, I, I declare, is done. Mm -hmm. All assignments are canceled. Well, I look now at, at, at this, the fourth system that I have, which is the law in, of this land. And again, we're going to go back. We're going to go back to 1896, Plessy versus Ferguson, Supreme Court case upholding the separate but equal doctrine as mm -hmm. the law of the land. Now. That's been that's been struck down, but but it's 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 intense and the heart of it, the spirit of it, has not. And of course, we all understand that separate but equal is not equal at all. That's right. And never has been, and it still isn't, and never will be. Right. That's a big lie. Mm -hmm. And then going into into the into eighteen eight from the eighteen eighties to the nineteen sixties, it got replaced by the Jim Crow laws, mm -hmm. the state local laws that enforce segregation. And then those faded out. They, they're not gone, but they, they, they're not as overt as they were. Mm -hmm. um, so we take aim right now Hallelujah. with that horrible history, yes. that horrible history. And I understand, having worked in law for so many years, mm -hmm. I understand this world. And I am just speaking to it right now as it stands now. And I'm saying that any federal, state, or local statute regulation, ordinance, or order that perpetuates inequities of any kind against the black community in any system in this country, just be destroyed right now, be dismantled, disabled, 
Yes. Decimate. Gone. We want it gone. Father, we don't want one single law, no matter how small in this country, to remain. Yes. It carries forth these inequities. Yes. We want them abolished and gone, just out of our memory. We don't even want to remember these these laws anymore. Yes, yes, that's right. Yes, hallelujah. But by the authority that we have in Yahusha and by his blood, we just say, stronghold, you're gone. You're yes. next. It's over. Your time is done now. It is, yes. It is done. Yes. It is a new day. It is a new dispensation now. And you are you are done. Hallelujah. Declare and decree it now. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I turn my sights now on the on the fifth system. The fifth stone, which is the church. Hmm. Mm. The church. Mm. I mean, we're going back to the 1950s and 1960s with the segregationist theology, mm. uh, the curse theory, uh, that which the lie that that, uh, that the slaves were Hamites who were cursed by the Bible, so they it was God ordained. Mm. Slavery was God ordained. That's what that's what they say. That was one of their theories. It, integration never aimed only for separation. The assertion. I'm going to read a few quotes I have here, and, and this is this is coming from a book called Mississippi Praying. Mm -hmm. The assertion of many of its defenders to the contrary. Instead, it calculated to advantage whites in every facet of their lives and to saddle blacks with corresponding and unyielding disadvantages. Not only did white Christians fail to fight for black equality, they often labored mightily against it, particularly in the South, but not only in the South. Um, the white churches in, defied the Supreme Court. They voted for segregationist candidates. They drafted and promoted anti-civil rights legislation. They herded black activists into jail and they formed citizens group, citizen groups to keep white supremacy alive. Mm, 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 mm. There's a Missy, Mississippi journalist, Holden Carter, called his native South, quote, a land of churchgoers who paid little attention to Christian concepts of the brotherhood of man. White supremacy flourished, flourished in part because of evangelical religion's strength and not in spite of it. One of the one one of the uh, doctrines that they would put forth quite often was its doctrine of well, one heart at a time. Um, you know what's important is is converting individuals to the gospel, which of course is also part of and parcel of what we do as Christians. However, they refuse to look at systems or or the suffering that was right before their eyes. Yes, and. Um, Jim Crow required a religion that would not mount a moral challenge, and they didn't. Evangelical religion faithfully guarded white supremacy's central tenet and fundamental myth. Blacks suffered, but whites bore no blame for these travails. Mm. And that, that's just the very beginning of the role that the church, particularly the white church, I'm speaking of the white church, um, the role that it played in keeping white supremacy alive and well and slavery flourishing and, and unchallenged and in place. Yes. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So right now we, we, we target this, um, this section of the, of the altar of the stronghold that is the white church mm -hmm. yes. in America. Mm -hmm. White Church in America, North, South, and North, both. Yes. And we decree and declare that the evil, both the silence, which in itself was evil, and mm -hmm. the and the action, the actual overt actions that were taken mm -hmm. to 
to keep slavery in place and to keep white supremacy uh, alive and well. We come against both of those things. Yes. In the in the white church in America right now, and we yes. declare and yes. decree that it will stop, that it will end, that its power, its hypocrisy, will be cut off, will be dismantled, mm. will be disempowered, and that it will have no more power, none, yes, operate any longer. Mm -hmm. in this capacity yes it is no more business as usual no more I thank you Yahuwah that you sent your son to give us this authority yes. and we believe we have faith mm. we trust we know that this is going to come to pass that this is happening right now as we speak yes it's Always. happening that's right and it won't be reversed and it won't be stopped it won't be stopped that's right we are oh, shutting ooh. it down Ooh, yes but this isn't a place with all due respect um you know like iraq or afghanistan that has seen conflict raging for decades you know this is a relatively civilized uh, relatively European, I have to choose those words carefully too, a uh, city where you wouldn't expect that or hope that it's going to happen. Now the unthinkable has happened to them. And this is not a developing third world nation. This is Europe. As you're talking to us, Matthew, we're playing in the latest pictures of some of the refugees trying to get on trains or trying to get out of Ukraine. And, and what's compelling is just looking at them, the way they're dressed. These are prosperous, I'm loath to use the expression, these are prosperous middle class people. These are not obviously refugees trying to get away from areas in the Middle East that are still in a big state of war. These are not people trying to get away from areas in North Africa. They look like any European family that you would live next door to. These are not refugees from Syria. These are refugees from uh, neighboring Ukraine. I mean, that, is, quite frankly, is part of it. These are um, Christians, they're white. It's really emotional for me because I see European people with blue eyes and blonde hair being killed, children being killed every day with Putin's missiles. Some of the media coverage of the conflict in Ukraine has been kind of off. We have reporters and pundits making some rather awful remarks about the nature of this conflict and these refugees versus, say, conflicts and refugees in the Middle East. First off, Europe has been home to some of the worst wars and worst war crimes in human history. I mean, the Holocaust. So why this surprise that bad things are happening in Europe? So why this surprise that bad things are happening in Europe? Bad things are happening in Europe. Bad things are happening in Europe. I want to look now, I, I'm going to turn away from the systems, and I, want, I just want to look at the lies themselves. We're going to go after the lies. Psalm 119, 69 says, The proud have forged a lie against me. And boy, have they. Mm. Lie number one, whites are superior. Mm. <laughs> and this is rooted in pride and self-gain, both. So I, I, I'm just going to read scripture. I'm just going to read. And let, let's see what the Lord has to say about this. Hallelujah. Okay. Yes. Yah resists the proud. James 4, 6. Yah knoweth the proud from afar off. 
He sees them coming. Yes. Psalm 138. Everyone that is proud in his heart is an abomination to Yah. Proverbs 16, 5. Mm -hmm. Yah scatters the proud in the imagination of their hearts. Luke 151. Let the proud be ashamed, for they have dealt perversely with me without a cause. Mm -hmm. Psalm 199, 78. Mm -hmm. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. Mm. Psalm 115. Mm, mm, mm. Yah will destroy, destroy the house of the proud. Woo. Proverbs 1525. Let's see what's going to happen in the last days. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. In the last days, men shall be lovers of their own selves, boasters and proud. Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. Isaiah 2.12 Howl ye, howl, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. Oof. And mm. will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Isaiah 13, 6, 10 through 11. It shall come to pass in the last days, the lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. And Yahuwah alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is high and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. Isaiah 2, 2, 11 to 12. Call together the archers against Babylon. All ye that bend the bow, camp against it round about. Let none thereof escape. Recompense her according to her work, according to all that she hath done, do unto her. For she hath been proud against Yah, mm. against the Holy One of Israel. Therefore shall her young men fall in the streets, and all her men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith Yah. Behold, I am against thee, O thou most proud, saith the Lord God of hosts, for thy day has come the time that I will visit thee. And the most proud shall stumble and fall, and none shall raise him up. And I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it shall devour all round about him. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let go. Their redeemer is strong, the Lord of hosts is his name. He shall thoroughly plead their cause, that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. Jeremiah 50, 33-34. And finally, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly, shall be stubble, and I shall leave them neither root nor branch. Malachi 4.1 Father, we come against this lie, this, this lie of white superiority. There's not an ounce of truth in it. It's pure wickedness. Yes. It has caused immeasurable suffering to your people and and to the to the white race also. It does not, it has poisoned us as well. So we just come against that lie right now in the name of Yahusha, by his blood and with the authority he gives us and we decree and we declare that that lie be destroyed yes be silenced in this land yes and all who 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 seek to speak it and to perpetuate it, mm -hmm. that they be 
stop that they be that the they they be unable to even speak mm -hmm. if they try to say another word mm -hmm. about this. Yes. We're silencing this lie in our land. Yes. Total silence. Crickets chirping. Silence. Yes. They will not speak anymore. Yes. In Yahusha's name, not another word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We believe this. We believe. We know that this is going. This is going to come to pass. This is coming to pass right now. This is the beginning of the end. Mm -hmm. That's this it is. Is yes. This is going to clear the way for your people. And if it's to get up and out of here, then so be it. Whatever you have planned, Father Yah, for your people. This is to clear the path so nobody will resist them. Oh, yeah. And nobody will harm them anymore. Hallelujah. Somehow, this altar of white supremacy carries with it this understanding that it's okay to hate. And not only is it okay to hate, it's okay to brutalize and act out that hate and murder and lynch and every other abomination under the sun that it's okay that's the lie of white supremacy that somehow it's it's there's nothing wrong with it it's okay it's some strange fruit hanging from southern trees. Right? It's okay to put your knee on somebody's neck until they're dead. It's okay. It's not okay. And the blood of Israel cries from the ground to Yah. So we come against that lie that it's okay. It's okay to do these things and to hate. And we utterly destroy that lie. We tear that thing down. We obliterate, obliterate that from the heavenly realm and the earthly, or earthly realm. Okay. From heaven and earth, we obliterate that thing. To call it wickedness isn't even, it's not enough. It's something, it's something worse than that. I don't even know what it, the name of it is. And I, I have a hard time even speaking it. But right now, I'm taking the authority of Yahusha and his blood, and I'm throwing everything I have in the spirit realm against that lie right now. And I expect that that lie is going to die, that it's going to evaporate. Hallelujah. Father, help me. I don't have words. For it, I don't have words, Father, but you know in, in the spirit what has to happen. And I'm begging you right now to get rid of that thing 
just obliterate it. Please. Thank you. I know that you're doing it. I know that you're going to do this. If only it had come sooner. But here we are. I declare and I decree going forward there'll be no more brutality no more violence against Yasharal in this country. Please, Father, hear us. You said what we loose from heaven in prayer will be loosed. And so I pray that you will loose millions and millions of angels, of warring angels down into this country in particular, right now, to fight for Yasharal, to surround them, round about every one of them, and protect them from any more of this nonsense. Let it, as your word says, let this hatred be turned back on those who hate. The next lie that I have here that I want to go after is something I hear a lot in my community. It's denial. It's a lie of denial. The lie that says, we never personally owned slaves, so we're not responsible. I hear that all the time, all the time. Another version of it is denying any current racism or inequities. There's no racism, where? Where, I don't see it. My nephew just lost a job because of affirmative action. I hear that all the time. So I'm just coming against that line. And I want to read a scripture here about this, actually. This is Matthew 23, 30 through 33. Jesus was talking to the scribes and Pharisees, and he said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? How? Well, I think, that, I think we know the answer to that. They won't. Right. And this, this other lie that, that racism doesn't exist anymore? Where is it? We don't see it? Well, of course you don't see it because you, you're white. You, of course you don't see it. Talk it's, about a sobering truth. Ignoring to the point of, of absurdity that black communities to this day are left with substandard housing, a deficient educational system, discriminatory economic systems, vicious law enforcement systems and unfair judicial systems all of it just deny just no we don't see it so i come against that lie that denial which is, which is a form of lying it is lying it's absolutely lying but we come against that stubborn wicked denial in the name of Yahushua and by his authority. And we, we just tear that down. We just tear down that part of that, that altar that is denial mm. that rises up from the white community, the white race. It's, it's stubborn and it's, 
Stiff necked. Yes. Stiff necked. So I just I just detonate that 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 brick that is denial. We just blow it up, schmitherines into the air, blow away. No more denial. No more. Let it not stand. Let it not stand anymore. It's it's an affront. It's an insult. Yes. To the Most High. Yes, it is. Absolute insult. I have one last lie, and this is by no means all of them. This is just a handful of systems and lies, but it's a beginning, and yes. these are big ones. These are big ones. Yes. The last one is, the last lie is, we don't owe them anything. Hmm. We don't owe them anything. Mm. Just rooted in greed. Mm, 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 mm. So I'm going to read what the Most High says about that. Thou shalt not steal. <laughs> Exodus 2015. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him part, let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him the needs. Ephesians 4.28 Trust not in oppression, and become not vain in robbery, for Yah renders to every man according to his work. Psalm 62 The people of the land have used oppression, and exercised robbery, and have vexed the poor and needy. Yes, they have oppressed the strangers wrongfully. Ezekiel 22, 29. The robbery of the wicked shall destroy them, because they refuse to do judgment. That's called denial. <laughs> Proverbs 21, 7. In the book of Revelation, after the sixth trumpet judgment, the word says, and the rest of the men that were not killed by these plagues repented not of the works of their hands. Neither repented they of their murders, nor their sorceries, nor their fornications, nor of their thefts. Mm. Revelation 9, 20, 21. Yahushua said, And shall not Yahuwah avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Mm. Luke 18, 7 through 8. Thousands, million, I don't know what the numbers are of people. Who knows? I mean, and that's just the beginning. The free labor is just the beginning of what was stolen. Stolen. Just stolen. How are they, how how will they avoid the fires of hell? I come against this lie that we don't owe them anything. Yes. In Yahushua's name and by his blood and by his authority, I destroy that lie right now. Yes. Hallelujah. And I declare recompense, reparations, restitution. Hallelujah. Restoration. And I declare that Yashara will come out with great substance. Yes. Hallelujah. Yah said from the beginning, and they will. I pray for my people that it comes from our hands so that we can avoid the fires of hell. Yes. And that it doesn't come from another place, but it might. I don't know. With our cold, dead hands, we may hold on to this. I don't know. But I'm coming against that lie right now, and I'm just, I'm just tearing it down. Yes. I'm calling it what it is. Mm -hmm. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you that, that as this lie is silenced in my people, in our heads, mm -hmm. and in our culture, as it is silenced, that the Ruach would come in like a flood yes. and get a hold of our people, get a hold of our people, and, and turn them for their sakes, for mm -hmm. their sakes, 